Now, after you've started the installation process and chosen any options that you needed to at the boot screen, we're going to go ahead and move forward. Now, the first option that's going to be available to you is the language in which the operating system will run under. Now, obviously, this is pretty important because if you choose the wrong language, then you're going to have some problems later trying to figure out what menu items mean. So, by default, English is selected. So, most of the time, you can simply accept the defaults here and move forward. Your next option is going to be the keyboard layout. Now, the reason that this is important as well is that in various countries around the world, they don't all use a standard QWERTY keyboard. And if they do, some of the keys may represent alternate characters. So by choosing the keyboard layout that is specific to the language that you plan to use, you can ensure proper functionality of your hardware and your configuration options. As we move forward, we're going to get to choose our mouse model and type. Now this is also pretty important simply because you have various amount of buttons on your mouse. It can be USB, PS2, and can even, in some circumstances, be a serial mouse. So we want to make sure that we choose the appropriate configuration there so Linux can interpret the mouse clicks properly. And there's actually a pretty interesting feature here called three button emulation. And this will allow you to use an alternate key to pretend as if you have a third button on your mouse just to provide additional functionality inside of Linux. Now when installing Red Hat 7.3, we have the ability to choose a couple of pre-configured options here. Now the first one is Workstation. Now these various options are only going to serve the purpose of deciding what packages to install or what software is necessary for your system. By choosing Workstation, we're basically saying that we have a simple PC, probably in a network environment, that is going to require items such as word processing, possibly some file sharing, client tools, and things of that nature. Now if we go the server route, this is basically going to perform a network role, usually providing resources of some type, such as authentication, applications, and files, to our end users also on the network with the server. Usually this is going to be a higher end configuration with specific software needs. They also have the option to choose laptop. Now the nice thing about choosing the laptop installation is that it will install power management tools that will allow you to monitor your battery life, power down when necessary, and a lot of the features that the Windows Power Management in Microsoft offers to laptop users there. And finally, we can choose the custom option. This will allow us to decide what packages we want to install, and we can actually remove default packages if necessary. Now we also have the option to upgrade the existing operating system. Now this is only going to work if you have an older Linux operating system already installed. And this will basically keep your existing files and what configurations that it can save. If you're running a Windows box, the upgrade definitely won't work. Now depending on the distribution that you use during the installation, you might have additional choices, maybe fewer choices, or it may even be in a different order. But the key thing to remember here is we're actually using Red Hat 7.3. So that's kind of the order that we're going to follow throughout the course where necessary, unless we're working with some Debian-specific items. So moving into hardware setup, which is actually the next set of screens that will be available to us during our installation. We get to choose configuration options for things like network cards, video cards, monitors, things of that nature. And we also get to go into pretty good level of detail to how we want those configured, what drivers we want to use, and on and so forth. So now that we've got a pretty good idea of where we stand as far as the initial installation and moving on into the hardware setup, next we're going to take a look at some options for our boot manager, and finally the packages that we might need to install along with our system.